Help me bless you today. Hey, bless that wonderful name. Of. Come on and bless that wonderful name. Of. Help me to bless that wonderful name. Of. There is no other name. Whoa, come on and bless that wonderful name. Of. Help me today. Bless that wonderful name. Of. Come on and bless that wonderful name of There is no other name Yeah Bless that wonderful name of Come on and bless that wonderful name of Help me to bless that wonderful name of There is no other name Yeah No other name no other name, no other name, no other name. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. No other name, no other name. Hey, bless that wonderful name of. Come on and bless that wonderful name of. Come on and bless that wonderful name of. There is no other name. Yeah. Power in the name of. Oh, there's power in the name of. Come on, there's power in the name of. Hey, there's no other name. Yeah. I know healing in the name of. Oh, yeah, there's healing in the name of. Healing in the name of Oh, there's no other name Yeah, no other name No other name Come on, Bethel No other name Say it loud Let the devil hear you No other name No other name No other name No other name no other name, no other name, hey, no other name, no other name, no other name, no other name, come on and bless that wonderful name of, oh, bless that wonderful name of, come on and bless that wonderful name of, there is no other name. Oh, y'all ain't saying like there's no other name. No other name. No other name. The name saved me. The name touched me. The name filled me. The name, the name, the name. The name Jesus. Y'all don't hear me today. I woke up with the name. I sleep with the name. I breathe the name. The name Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and say, Jesus. 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 No other name. No other name. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I'm Jesus only. Y'all ain't hear me on the day. So y'all might be cold, but I'm burning on the inside. And I got something on the inside. Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, I wish I had some praises in here. I wish I had somebody that knows something about the name. Hallelujah. Thank God for that name. And I was baptized in that name. My sins was washed away in that name. I didn't go looking for the name. The name found me. Y'all ain't with me on this morning. Glory to his name. Amen. This is a celebration service. Can we say amen? If you want to find a dead church, I can recommend some to you. But this ain't one of them. This is a Jesus only church. There's power in that name. You can be dead, and that name will come in and revive you, pick you up, and turn you around. 
Y'all ain't hearing me on this morning. I'll just praise him by myself. Pick you up and turn you around. Set your feet on solid ground. I got any witnesses out there. Glory. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. And he's coming back for me. Just like he said he would. Glory to his name. All right. God is good, isn't he? Oh, yeah. I'm enjoying being saved. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. Amen. Somebody says, I feel like praising, praising him. Praise him in the morning. I don't need no organ. I can praise him all night long. I just feel like some folk feel like a drink. Some folk feel like a blunt. All I can say is about myself, I feel like praise him. I feel like praise him. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to let the choir praise him. Amen. If you got anything in you, you'll praise him while the choir praising him. Because this thing is contagious. I meant to preach that. Jesus is contagious. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Let's receive the choir. God bless the choir.
It is well. Yeah. Now we gotta tell yourself that it's well. Might not look well, but just keep telling yourself it's well. It'll be well after a while. So I'll just say it's well right now. Because I had faith in the list. I believe that it would be well. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. Hallelujah. It is well. Oh, yeah. No matter what you're going through, it's still well. I'm not going to let the devil spoil my joy. Hallelujah. He can't take nothing away from me. Oh, no. Somebody talk about the devil stole something. He can't steal nothing from me. As long as I got King Jesus, it is well. Oh, I wish I had some witnesses in here. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to his name. Yes, sir. I like making the I like confusing the devil sometimes. He think just because he caused your car to break down, that's gonna stop you. But you confuse him and let him know that ain't gonna stop me. If I gotta catch a ride to the house of God. Hallelujah. Oh yes. I'm determined to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm determined. Yes, I am. Oh, yes. Oh, through hard trials, persecution. I, whoa, I'm determined. Yes, I. Oh, I got a few determined folk out there. Hey, I'm determined to walk with G. Come on, choir, help me. Yes, I am. Whoa, I'm determined. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Hey, through heart. Persecution. I'm determined to walk with Jesus. The next part says this, I'm determined to live. I'm determined to live for Jesus. Oh, some of y'all need to say it loud. The kids feed yourself. I'm determined to live for Jesus. Yeah, through heart. Persecution. I'll be faithful. I'm determined to live for Jesus. There's another part to this song goes like this. Ain't it grand to live for Jesus? Ain't it grand? Come on, help me say it. A simple song. Ain't it grand to live for Jesus? Monday, Tuesday, hey! Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, ain't it grand to live for Jesus? Come on, one more time. Say it like you mean it. Hey, ain't it grand to live for Jesus? Whoa, yes it is. Hey, ain't it grand? Every day, hey, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, yeah, Monday, Tuesday, hey, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whoa, ain't it great? Hallelujah. Oh, yes. 
Jesus is something else, isn't he? Maybe I'll preach that sometime. He's just something else. Hallelujah. Glory. All right, we're going to move on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. There's a man of God that passed away this past week. But he's all right because he's in Jesus. Let me say amen. Waiting on this crown. We got to get there, saints. Is that right? We got to get there. So when we're caught up, amen. See Bishop Stewart there. I believe he'll look at you and say, child, I'm glad you made it. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Y'all ain't hearing me. Glory. Some of y'all, he might be surprised. Can we say amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. But nonetheless, we're going to get there. Is that right? We're going to get there. All right. What are we supposed to do now? Take offering. We're supposed to have announcements. Is that right? And Jesus is coming. That's the announcement. Can we say amen? If you don't get that announcement, you forget about the rest. But well, we're going to let her come just in case he don't come. That you can govern yourselves accordingly. But if he does come, just disregard everything she said. Because we're going to be in glory. God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a hand. This is Spalding. Praise the Lord, sisters. Uh, this is good news. The deadline for your money to purchase T-shirts for the uh, International Missionary and Christian Women's Association Conference has been extended until this Friday, which is March the 30th. Uh, it's for the Region 5 rally, and that's going to be June the 26th and 27th in Ashland, Kentucky. The sizes from small to extra large, $10 and up from that 12 we ask that you see, uh, see President Baudre, our Vice President, Sister Cleopatra, to get those t-shirts. Amen. We'd like to remind everyone that on this Friday, which is March the 30th, there will be a Good Friday full ordinance communion. And that means that there will be foot washing and service of the communion. Full ordinance communion on Friday at 730. And of course, next Sunday is Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We'd like to announce to all those that volunteered to be servers for the meal on today to please report to the fellowship hall right after service is dismissed. Again, all servers, please report to the fellowship hall right after service is dismissed. And the concluding announcement is the men's ministry choir will be rehearsing on Thursday, that's March the 29th, and on Thursday, April the 5th, in preparation to sing on the second Sunday. And that is from Brother Kirby Johnson. Thank you so much. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 We want you to govern yourselves accordingly uh, to that, those announcements. And communion this Friday will be just the, will not have the foot washing. Uh, we would just have the uh, communion portion uh, since we are dealing with some technical difficulties here in the building. So. Um, so we want those that are members of Greater Bethel Temple, you've been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and members here, we want you here to partake of the Lord's Supper as we commemorate uh, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? amen. Can we say amen? amen? So we want you here so that we can uh, observe this as the Lord has said, this do as often as ye drink it, remember the Lord. Of course, we're having some difficulties here. Amen. But uh, nonetheless, we uh, want to encourage you to partake of this portion. Everyone should partake of communion that has been baptized and filled. Uh, is that right? Part of our 
uh, divine sacrament, you do yourself a great disservice if you do not partake of this portion. The Lord uh, will do something special for you. God bless you. All right, we're going to prepare to take our offering, uh, I believe, at this time. Uh, we're going to also have Sister Elena, uh, Minister Elena Jennings will be reading uh, the portion of the program in honor of Suffolk Bishop Eugene Stewart. And then the choir will come with the final selection and then we will get into the word of the Lord. We also have some food prepared. Um, we want to thank God for our culinary staff that has prepared food, worked so hard uh, all day yesterday. Praise the Lord. And um, hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. So we praise God uh, for her and, and also the dining room uh, staff. And um, we want to encourage the brothers to help out in any way that you can for uh, the dinner that will be served afterwards. Praise the Lord. All right, so uh, we want to acknowledge our visitors. We're happy to have you in Jesus' name. If you're a visitor, just wave your hand. God bless you. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand for our visitors. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And give, give the Lord a hand for visitors that did wave their hand. Praise the Lord for them too. We say amen. <laughs> All right. God bless you. And so um, we want to give unto the Lord. Amen. This church is ran on tithes and offerings. Is that right? Amen. Praise the Lord. That's how you pay the church bills. Um, saying that you don't have to pay tithes to go to, to, to uh, pay church bills is like you don't have to go to work to get a check to pay your cable bill. So can we say Amen. If you want cable, you want ATT, if you want that phone that we uh, use for everything, is that right? Take it to us in the bathroom. We're in the bathroom with the phone. Praise the Lord. You got to pay that bill. Is that right? Or is yours free? Is yours free? Well, I got the Obama phone. Obama ain't around no more. So Trump going to make you pay. Is that right? <laughs> Trump says everybody pays. And so this church is ran, we, we pay the church bills with tithes and offering and pledges. That's how we're able to do some of the things that we're doing. Praise the Lord. This building has great expenses, great expenses. That's why it's kind of cool in here right now because our boiler went out uh, for the fourth time since I've been pastoring. Uh, praise the Lord. So somebody say, come on spring. Well, it's already here. What's going on? I tricked you, didn't I? Praise the Lord. So uh, let us give unto the Lord. If you give, God will bless you. That's not a cliche. That's a truth. If you give, the Lord will bless your finances. The key to getting out of poverty is to give. Because see, you can't receive nothing with your hand like this. Is that right? If you got your hand open, somebody can put something in it. Folk always giving me money. All the time. Amen. I go preach somewhere, somebody give me some money. Praise the Lord. And my wife seems to be around all the time when that happens. <laughs> the Lord knows how to put you in the right place. Is that right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So uh, and I told my wife, I said, well, anything I have is yours. Uh, because you had all those, you had all my kids, so I owe you. I owe you that. I must have been in the spirit when I said that years ago. Uh, but nonetheless... Uh, can we say amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, Deacon Charles. Is that true? Amen. You know he going See, he could act up. His wife ain't here. But he knows we'll tell on him one more hand. So, <laughs> all right. Deacon Amos. Why do you think Deacon Amos has been married for so long? Amen. We know the ropes. Is that right? Praise the Lord. God bless you. All right. So let's give unto the Lord. The choir's going to come and sing some, giving the Lord some offering songs. Can we say amen? <laughs> to inspire you to give unto Jesus. God bless you. Amen. So let us all stand you in the hands of the ushers. Amen. Please follow the directions. All right, choir. Amen. What we gonna sing? Hallelujah. Don't sing that worldly song, Money, Money, Money. Y'all know that song? All right, come on, give the Lord a hand as we come. God bless you.
concerned about the spiritual man they're concerned about the natural man amen but you need to get the spiritual man fed too is that right uh, so as uh, evangelist Jenny's come come on let's get the Lord a hand for her as she comes God bless you. known to man, we know better. He overcame. He overcame. I recall sitting in Bible study and hearing him teaching through the Bible verse by verse. At times he would attempt to incorporate Lady Stewart into the lesson, but would receive from his dear wife a gentle look, urging him to move to the next verse. <laughs> I would silently laugh to myself and say, he's in trouble now. <laughs> oh, Pastor Stewart, he never let those inspiring looks prevent him from interjecting a little Lady Elaine into the next Bible class, though. He was persistent. 
Speaking of the word, oh, didn't it seem like a lot of the songs that he sung began with this small word of oh? He would just rear back and then, oh, and the song started. <laughs> I also remember Elder Stewart preaching and not merely tapping the podium, but bamming it. Just Any demon under the sound of his voice and in the vicinity of the pulpit where he beat, were beat up with a left and a right. A left and a right. <laughs> week after week, Sunday after Sunday, they were beat up. Then after he was done preaching, he would take his seat and was known to speak a little Spanish to those who passed by and those who stopped to shake his hand. Hola, he would say. And I would reply, hola, Elder Stewart. I wonder if hola and see were the only words that he knew. <laughs> or maybe he was fluent, and if another member approached him, they would carry on the conversation but I would stop and stare because I would think that they were speaking in tongues. I wonder. But it's all right that I don't understand Spanish. It's all right that my hands would probably disintegrate if I started pounding on the podium as hard as he did. You know what else is all right? It's all right knowing that he'll get up without hesitation when the Lord says, come! He's gonna get up. And if we continue to overcome as he has, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Rest in peace, Pastor Stewart. I love you. Jesus. I love you, Sister Stewart.
still dead. Is that right? They say he's like Buddha, but Buddha's still dead. And Jesus said, behold, I was dead, but I'm alive. Amen. Our Savior is a living Savior. Amen. He's in the world today. Amen. You ask me how I know he lives? Amen. He lives in my heart. He's not the God of the dead, but he's the God of the living. Amen. For all men live in him. Even when we so-called die, we're not really dead, we're asleep. Amen. Waiting for that day of the resurrection, the rapture. God bless you. Amen. It's been a wonderful service. Praise the Lord. In honor of this great man of God, this is something that we're going to be doing. 
Um, Lord Terry's next year, we will have service uh, commemorating the life of Dr. William Foree also. Praise the Lord. And to the late Honorable Bishop David T. Schultz. We don't want to remember these great men of God that have left their footprint in Pentecost history. Amen. We want to celebrate them, let you know uh, that they are not forgotten. If God hasn't forgotten them, then we won't forget. Is that right? Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't have an ego. I believe in recognizing those that were in Christ before me. And this is what it's all about. Well, we want to call your attention to two passages of scriptures found. The first is found in Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 17 and 18. And then we will go to Romans chapter 8. Just a little thought that we have to give you today to encourage you. And I think that uh, before we read the scripture, I would like everyone to stand and give a standing ovation to Lady Stewart. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand. Give the Lord a praise for her. Amen. Oh, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. God bless you. Yes. Amen. Let them hear you out on the stream. Come on and give the Lord a hand. God bless you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lady Stewart. God bless you. Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, 18. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Romans chapter 8, and we want to pick it up, praise the Lord, in verses number 35, 39, amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 35, 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, for God's sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And all the people said, Amen. the indestructible church, the indestructible church. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the saints and friends and visitors that have come to the house of God, on today, Lord, greater Bethel, the house of God, we pray that you would let your word have free course in the lives of your people. Give us an ear to hear, a heart to receive, a mind to understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. We pray, Lord, that you would save somebody on today, that you would loose the bound and set the captive free. Free that man, free that woman, free that boy, and free that girl. Encourage our Lady Stewart on today right now. And the rest of the family, Lord, the children that are in their respective places on the day, and the saints of God here right now, bless everyone here in a mighty way. Bind Satan and the forces of evil on today. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and say amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. You may be seated. 
the indestructible church. When people talk about church, I heard Bishop Herman, who was uh, one of my diocesans, I've been under, Bishop Merritt is my sixth diocesan that I've been under uh, in 38 years of being saved. Bishop Herman used to say that there were three components to the church. There is what the world calls the church. When you watch television, CNN News or Fox News or what have you, newspaper, when they talk about the church, they are generally talking about the Catholic Church. They are recognized in this world as the church. They are the most powerful, political, richest church upon the face of the earth. The Pope uh, is accepted and respected pretty much all over the world. That's just one component of the church. Then there's a second component of the church which deals with everybody that we know that have been born again of the water and of the spirit. Everybody that we know that have been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance, which is called the visible church. Then there's that third component of the church, which is called the invisible church, which Paul talked about it, Timothy, when he said, the foundation of God stand the sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. That third component of the church is those that God knows that are really his. Those that God, based on his foreknowledge, know that will be in the rapture. That church is an indestructible church. That church cannot be defeated. They are those that will be in the rapture, that will be caught up when the trump shall sound and the dead in Christ that will rise first. That church, those that God himself knows that are right with him. The thing of it is with us is that we don't know who is really all in that church. But we are to believe that we are. And that's why we are to strive to do all that we are supposed to do. To ensure the fact that we are one of his. That we are one of those that will be caught up in the clouds. That we are one of those that God, before the foundation of the world, saw us make it in the end. Because the scripture says, Jesus said, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. And that church cannot be defeated. That church, the gates of hell cannot prevail against. That church is an indestructible church. And of course, in the book of Romans, what got my attention as I was reading this text just in my office this morning, where he says that nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Us is plural. Us is not singular, it's plural. It means more than one. The us, as Paul told the saints in Ephesus in Ephesians chapter number one that God had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. The us is the church of God. Those that the Lord has already seen make the rapture. Those that the Lord has already seen that have made their calling and election sure. And so since God is the one that knows everybody that will be saved and everybody that will be lost even before it happens, it's futile or useless for me to hypocrite then in the church. Can we say amen? amen? Because I'm not fooling anybody but myself. It's futile for me to, amen, shout on Sunday and drink on Monday and do whatever I want to do because that's not going to get me anywhere. Now as the old saying is that you may fool some of the people some of the time and most of the people most of the time, but you can never fool God. Can we say amen? He's got the record. He sees everything. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the what? 
evil and the good. So it don't pay to fake and to put on and to put on a show. That's not going to get us anywhere. Praise God, because God knows those that are true, amen, and those that are fake. Can we say amen? He knows the saints from the ain'ts. He knows the godly from the ungodly. He knows the holy from the unholy. He knows those that are real and those that are just putting on the show. You know, today in churches, there's a lot of putting on showing. Can we say amen? You don't have to go all the way to, where's the Apollo at? Some, where's it, in New York somewhere? You ain't got to go to the Apollo to see a show. Amen. You can go to some churches and see a show. Praise the Lord. You can go to some churches and be entertained. And that's what people seem to want today. They want to be entertained. We are so programmed to being amused and being entertained that I saw on Family Feud on one occasion that, amen, they had the top four answers on the board. And the category was name the most boring place that you could ever go to. And guess what was number one? Amen. Can we say amen? They said church being number one. Amen. I said to myself, they just ain't been to the right church. Because when you go to God's church and you are for real in God, amen, you just can't just sit there with your arms folded unless you just want to be dead in your seat. Amen. But when you just think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, something begins to happen on the inside. That's if you really love God. Is that right? If you're faking out there, ain't nothing going to happen on the inside. Praise the Lord. You can try to fake it, but amen, those that are really sincere can see through the fakery. Can the church say amen? But when God has been good to you and you know he's been good to you, when God has been better to you than you've been to yourself, and when God has been so merciful to you that you know you didn't deserve it, amen, you come to the house of God, amen, you'll feel something as soon as you walk through the door. I wish I had a witness up in this house. Must be because you are part of the indestructible church. You see, those that are part of the indestructible church, no weapon formed against them will prosper. Those that are in the indestructible church, they don't let circumstances and situations slow them down and stop them. Can the church say amen? amen. Praise God. And so there are three components to the church. And a, 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 amen. And a lot of times people, when they uh, place judgment on church, those on the outside, they like to focus on the visible church. Praise God. Those that they understand that are supposed to be saved. Amen. And, 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 and when they look at that church, then that's when all of the uh, uh, word hypocrite comes into play. And that's when fakery comes into play. And that's where people use that as an excuse not to get in church. I don't go to church because there's too many hypocrites in the church. Well, that's the visible church. That's the church that you see. When we talk about the church, we're talking about those that God knows. Amen. It is mine that are really his. Can the church say Amen. And this is what the Apostle Paul was talking about. Amen. Paul considers himself part of that invisible church. Amen. He said that who shall separate us from the love of God? Amen. If you are in the, the indestructible church, if you are really for real for God, you ain't going to let nothing stop you and separate you. Amen. From Jesus. I understand that there are circumstances, there are situations that arise in our lives. And the devil a lot of times gets in the midst of situations and circumstances because he knows what buttons to push to get us off of our, pull us off our square, as they used to say in the penitentiary. Praise the Lord, pull you off your square or get you a little rattled, get you a little uh, uh, upset or out of sorts or uh, uh, out of character. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Praise God, the devil knows. You see, he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows just the right thing to do. He prays God to get us off of easy street and, and praise God, make us feel uneasy and feel unmotivated and uninspired. Can the church say amen? He knows just what to do. Praise God. And a lot of folk that are in the visible church will allow those things to stop them. Praise God. They will allow the fact that they're behind in their bills to influence them not to give God what belongs to him. 
they will allow their transportation problems to hinder them from getting to the house of God. They will allow being tired from work, amen, being bogged down, fooling around with, amen, the co-workers that are half crazy half the time anyway. Can we say amen? They will allow family members to influence them or friends or peer pressure or unsafe folk to influence them that causes them, amen, to alter what they know that they ought to be doing for God. But when you are part of that invisible church, you are part of the indestructible church. If you are one that God knows that you are his, nothing is going to stop you. Nothing is going to slow you down. Amen. You might get some bumps and bruises, but you get up and you keep on moving. Amen. Because you are part of that indestructible church that will not allow anything to separate you from the love of God. I wish I had some of them folk in here. Clap your hands and give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. It's unfortunate that a lot of people praise the Lord, are backsliding. Seems like that our churches are like revolving doors that as fast as they come in, they go out even faster. Can the church yeah, hallelujah. Used to be a time when folk get saved, they get right busy in the church. Is that right? Amen. They get saved, get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and they're ready, ready to work in the church. Can't sing a lick, but they just want to get in the choir. Praise God. Don't know how to usher, but they just want to get on the usher board. Amen. It's just something on the inside of them just want to, amen, do something for the Lord. Amen. No wonder David said, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? And the church shout hallelujah. Amen. But it's not like that anymore. Praise God. Folk come into church today with all kinds of baggage on them. Come into the church. Praise God. Go down in Jesus' name. And God fills them with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. But they still have a problem drinking and still have a problem smoking and still have a problem partying and still got issues and, and all these type of things. I wish we could go way back uh, to the days when I first got saved. Praise God, where you was on fire, couldn't wait to get to the house of God. But nowadays, folk get saved and you don't even see them anymore if you ever see them. Show up whenever they want to show up and as if God has done nothing for them at all. But I'm here to tell you, I'm part of that indestructible church. I, I'm not going to let nothing stop me. I, I'm not going to let nothing slow me down. For God I live and for God I die. Can the church clap the hand and shout hallelujah? I thought about Bishop Stewart the other day and praise God I told the Lord that amen if he could hear me I would like to go to the grave site and talk to him but I know he can't hear me because he's sleeping in Jesus but praise God if I could go to the grave site and just talk to him and tell him amen everything that we're doing trying to continue the legacy that he left behind can the church shout hallelujah and I thought about how sick he got and, and how afflicted he got but you see he was part of that in indestructible church. He didn't let the stroke slow him down. Uh, might not have been able to walk as fast as he could walk. Amen. But he was still walking. And the church said hallelujah. Might not have been able to preach as well as he used to, but he did the best that he could. Amen. He understood and knew that he was repeating himself a lot of times, uh, but that didn't matter. He wasn't concerned about the embarrassment of the saints of God. He was part uh, of that indestructible church. And he went on as long as he could go until God took breath out of his body. Till God said enough is enough. Uh, you fought a good fight. Uh, you finished your course. Uh, even though folk left and uh, talked about you, you kept the faith. Uh, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. I want to go out just like that. Amen. I want to be, uh, amen, just like that. Because some folk, uh, they get a cold and they can't come to church. Hallelujah. Amen. They get sick and they can't come to church. They say, amen, can't walk like they used to walk. And so they don't come to church. Uh, but he made no excuses. Uh, amen. He pressed on because, uh, amen, like the songwriter said, amen, pressing on the upward way. Uh, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Uh, Lord, plant my feet uh, on higher ground. Why? 
because I'm part of that indestructible church. Uh, I'm not faking. Uh, I'm for real in Jesus. Uh, I mean business in God. Uh, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. Praise God. And that's the church that Jesus was talking about. Uh, amen. He told Peter, uh, amen, the revelation that you have received. Uh, praise God as to who I am. Uh, he had asked him, he said, who do men say uh, that I, the son of man, am? Uh, and they said, some say you are John the Baptist. Uh, some are saying you are Jeremiah. Uh, and some are saying you are Elias uh, or one of the other prophets. Uh, but I heard the Lord say, who do you say that I am? Uh, and I heard Peter say, you are the Christ, uh, the son of the living God. Uh, and the church shut hallelujah. Uh, and the Lord said, blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah. Uh, of flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. Uh, but my father, which is in heaven. Uh, and I love that about God. Uh, you see, if you're going to know anything about Jesus, uh, God is going to have to reveal it to you. Uh, and the church shut hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't find out about Jesus huh, by reading a book that a man wrote. Huh. You can't find out about Jesus huh, in a seminary. Huh. You can't find out about Jesus. Huh. Amen. By just looking at a preacher on television. Huh. God has got to reveal uh, himself to you. Huh. And the church shut hallelujah. Huh. And I'm so glad uh, I know who he is. Huh. I'm so glad uh, that he knows who I am. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. I'm almost finished. Huh? Come on and say hallelujah. Huh? And I heard the Lord tell Peter, huh? that upon this rock, huh? I'm going to build my church. Huh? And the gates of hell huh? shall not prevail against it. Huh? What are you saying, Lord? Huh? I know this church that I'm building. Huh? I know the devil is going to come after it. Huh? I know he's going to pull all uh, his tricks in the book uh, uh, to destroy my church. Uh, I know he's going to use uh, persecution uh, to destroy my church. Uh, I know he's going to kill uh, some of them uh, to try to destroy my church. Uh, and I'm here to tell you right now, uh, the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail against it. Uh, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. Somebody say, well, Bishop, uh, some folk have backslidden uh, and gone back out in the world. Uh, that's because they weren't in uh, the indestructible church. Uh, that's because they got off the rock uh, and got on the sink and sand. Uh, have you heard the songwriter when he said, uh, on Christ, uh, the solid rock I stand. Uh, all of the ground uh, is sinking sand. Uh, as long as you're holding on to Jesus, uh, nothing can bring you down. Uh, as long as you're holding to the rock, uh, nothing can knock you off. Uh, as long as you are talking to God uh, and walking with him and living with him, uh, no demon in hell uh, can stop you. Uh, so the next time uh, trouble comes your way, uh, the next time the devil uh, comes knocking on your door, uh, you need to look that demon in the eye uh, and say nothing shall uh, separate me. Come on, Myron. Uh, from the love of God. Uh, I'm in the indestructible church. Uh, nothing can stop me. Uh, God knows who I am. Uh, heaven knows who I am. Uh, I'm one of his. Uh, clap your hand and say, yeah. yeah. Say, yeah. Uh, come on and say, yeah. Uh, if you want to hear uh, uh, you will outlast the trouble. Uh, uh, if you want to hear uh, uh, you will outlast the problems. Uh, uh, if you want to hear uh, uh, death can't hold you. Uh, uh, come on and say, yeah. Uh, uh, if you want to hear uh, uh, sickness can't hold you. Uh, uh, if you want to hear uh, uh, the devil can't hold you. Uh, uh, my mind uh, uh, is made up. Uh, uh, I'm one of 
his. Uh, I'm one of his. Uh, I'm going to make it uh, this journey somehow. Uh, Satan on my track. Uh, trying to turn me back. Uh, but I got to make this journey. Uh, I will make this journey. Uh, I'm determined. Uh, walk with Jesus. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, through hard trials. Uh, Cause I'm in a indestructible church, a tribulation, a persecution. A I'll be faithful. A come hell, high water. I'm in the church, a triumphant. A I'm in a the Savior's bride. A have you been baptized a into the body? A you need to get in a while you can. Uh, happy hand to say yeah indestructible church God's church that's why Bishop Stewart made it because he was in that indestructible what church you in can we say hallelujah look at yourself what kind of church are you in are you in the visible church where you're up some days and down the next, are you in the visible church to where some days you're doing right and other days you're doing wrong? But when you're in that invisible church, that church where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is in, that church that Moses and Noah is in, uh, amen, you will live what the Bible said. Uh, in the church, shout hallelujah. Uh, Oh yeah, it's all right that there's hypocrites. It's all right that you got folk faking. They stand up and praise the Lord as if they've been walking with him for decades. But God's got the record on high. That's why those of us that are in the indestructible church, amen, we seem to make it regardless of what come our way. We seem to triumph it no matter what happens. Our love for Jesus does not diminish. We keep on loving him and loving him. But like Job when he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Lose a loved one, but you still love him. Suffer tragedy, but the Lord is still good. His mercy endureth forever. What church are you in? Where are you? Only you can answer that. As as how you live before God. Because coming and acting one way and leaving out and doing something else is just a waste of time. Because you ain't fooling nobody but yourself. Sometimes they think they're fooling the preacher. God shows me a whole lot of stuff about folk. And he tells me don't say nothing. <laughs> I ain't just making that up. This is a scary position. When I first became pastor, God scared me to death. He said, all right, get it together. <laughs> See, God don't baby his pastors. He might baby y'all, oh, come on, honey. Jesus, did you see what they said? It's gonna be all right. When it comes to us, he's like Joshua, get up and get to work. He said, amen. Joshua was down praying, trying to figure out who's sin in the camp. The Lord said, get up. There's sin in the camp. It ain't time to pray. Some folks think it's time to pray all the time. Sometimes you got to do something. <laughs> ain't no need you talk about praying to stop you from smoking. Just throw the cigarettes away. Can we say amen? Ain't no need you praying talking about, I hope that man leave. Kick him out. Kick out. If you're part of the indestructible church, you will do what God said do. But if you are not part of that church, you'll make excuses. Well, where he gonna go? What he gonna do? What she gonna do? I see, see, it ain't none of my business trying to figure out how God's gonna do some things. He just wants me to believe it. In other words, you know how it was when you just growing up. Mama, what we gonna eat? I don't know, but don't worry about it. We gonna eat something. Y'all ever told that? Can I get any witnesses in here? Or oh, y'all ate? Y'all ate like kings every day? Lamb under glass? Vichy suave? Somebody said, what's that? I don't know if I heard about it. I don't know what it is. Soup. Some sort of 
some sort of cold, cold fish soup. Praise the Lord. Some of y'all might have had that too. Tuna fish in a bowl with some water in it. Can we say amen? Uh, soup. This is soup. Mama says it's soup. Throw some peas in it. You better eat that, boy. <laughs> and my sister made some grits. Try to force me and my brother to eat it. I wouldn't eat it. And she was beating me. My sister was abusive. My sister was a demon. That's the one that wanted to kill me. After we got old, she was beating me. Eat that grits. Poof. My brother was eating that grits. Mama came home. I said, Mama, look what Jeannie did. She made me. She said, these grits ain't even cooked. <laughs> she put the grits in a bowl with some water and stirred it up and tried and made my brother eat it. I wasn't eating it. I said, you have to kill me to eat that mess. And she tried to kill me too. Mama said, them grits ain't even cooked. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It was rough growing up in my house. That's why I said, Jesus, I need some help. Oh, yes. The indestructible church. See, God knows everything. Is that right? He knows your address. He knows what you've been doing. He knows what's on your mind right now. He knows some of y'all that are mad at me. He knows everything. I ain't coming back to that church. It was too bad. At least wait till you eat. Can we say amen? <laughs> so, so you can't say we didn't feed you. <laughs> How'd you like to preach it? I don't like him, but the food show was good. <laughs> the indestructible church. Jesus is coming back. Is that right? Y'all see those high school students doing those marches and they asked one of the students, was it Parkland, Parkland High School? Yeah. One of the students, they asked him, what has been the thing you have been unhappy with with the media? And he said, because the media has not interviewed any black students that were impacted in this tragedy. All they've been doing is talking to us. This was a white kid saying this. They have not talked to any, he said, our, 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 our students is 25% black and they haven't talked to not one of them. All they want to do is talk, about, talk to us. He said, that ain't right. Amen. Isn't that something? Amen. The devil can't get right. Can we say amen? amen? The devil's all in the media. He's all in television. He's doing his thing but God is doing his thing too. And I want to encourage you to be part of God's thing, what he's doing. Be part of his thing. So, I could have went all the way through the Old Testament. I don't want to take up all that time and show you how the church has been attacked from when Abel was killed by Cain. The righteous was slain by the unrighteous. And because and, and, and the devil tried to kill the church through, through, through Abel. And then God raised up another son by the name of Seth to continue the righteous line all the way down to our day in the era of persecution where 50 millions of Christians were martyred and Christians are being martyred today but God's church is still standing so we had time to go through all that but the devil tried to kill the church through fear of persecution now he's trying to kill the church from within he's trying to use ourselves against ourselves and against one another that's why some of our churches are segregated. You say amen. amen. The devil's trying to, to destroy, but he can't destroy the indestructible church. He can only destroy those that leave out of the church. Can we say amen? amen? Those are the only ones he can destroy. But as long as you stay in the truth and walk with God and live holy, live what this book says and live all of it. Can we say amen? amen? Live the good part. Live the ugly part. What's the ugly part? Lord, I got to love her. <laughs> I got to love him. Jesus, you know what they did to me? 
Jesus said, look what they did to me. Say amen. As bad as they treat you, ain't nobody trying to nail you to a cross, did they? Anybody chase you around with a hammer? Slow down, let me catch up with you. Oh. Anybody spit on you? Anybody been knocked in the mouth? I have been. I was sucker punched for the gospel's sake. Had three stitches in this lip. I asked, the parent, I asked him at the hospital, is this gonna leave a scar? He said, oh yeah. And you know how we are. I thought I was gonna be looking like Frankenstein. You know that big old scar that Frankenstein had? <laughs> I, I saw myself walking around looking like Frankenstein about the lip. But see, not only is Jesus a healer, but he's a plastic surgeon also. I can't even see the scar. I'm just smiling. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Paul said, you have not yet resisted under blood. I can say that I have for the gospel's sake. And I didn't fight him back. <laughs> I was like that movie in Equalizer, looking at him and sizing him up. Okay, I can do this. I can do that. 15 seconds. All right, let's go. I didn't do none of that. Hit me. The only thing about it, the deacons were just standing around and looking at me while he was trying to choke me. I said, uh, deacons, can you get him off me, please? <laughs> <laughs> God, let's choke him. He was right, right in the front of the church in Michigan. Choke him in. I said, deacons, I'll get, get the guy. Can you get the guy off me, please? <laughs> but I still got as big a mouth now as I have then. I ain't stopping. I still tell you the truth. <laughs> now I'm going to deflect those blows a little bit better now this time. As he kind of sucker punched me. Came in. Boom. Had my robe on. Fell off to the ground. Blood and everything. Yeah. Folk coming all out. That was the embarrassing part. Folk come out. What's going on? <laughs> With the church down there. You know how folk got out. Everybody came out. All in. I was like, Lord, we was in service. We had a guest preacher. We was in service. Guest preacher from, uh, a guest minister from Alabama. <laughs> but God is good, isn't he? He ain't stop me none. I'm still preaching the truth. So I can say, if somebody hit me, that I won't fight back because I've already done it. Because I'm in the indestructible church. Now, now, that don't mean that you just walk up here and hit me now, because I got Brother Cedric up here. <laughs> so I got Brother Cedric right there. I got Brother Briscoe right there. They're in key places. I don't know what Kirby going to do, but he's right there anyway. <laughs> I can see Kirby now. Bishop, I'll run and get help. <laughs> He's all right. That's my boy there. Everybody in the world, no Kirby. Folk are calling me, texting me. I want to meet Kirby. Where's the Kirby? I said, we'll ship him down there to you. Where you at? <laughs> Praise the Lord. But God is good. I'm enjoying being saved. I ain't depressed. I ain't sad. I got problems. <laughs> I'll take your problems over mine. As a matter of fact, I'll take all this side. Y'all keep y'all's. I'll take all this side. And trade you mine for yours, all of y'all. Praise the Lord. But I'm so busy loving Jesus, I ain't got time to be discouraged and worried. But usually, he always works out. I'm gonna say this: We're gonna close. One thing Bishop Merritt said uh, at the council that made a lot of sense. Bishop Merritt has a lot of witty sayings that that he does. It's because he got them from the fathers. He said we should not take this so serious. God knows what's going to happen before it happens. Is that right? He knew the power was going to go out. We were going to have to try to figure out a way to get sound. The Lord blessed us. I think the guy just came to flip the switch, and that was it, huh? The breaker. The Lord, wait till that bill comes. But the Lord knows what the bill is going to be. <laughs> I slipped back for a minute, but then I, got, I can't recover myself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So uh, God knows everything about everything. And a lot of times, we're, you know, we're our own worst enemy. We worry 
and, and, and fret about things, but God already knows about that. He's just waiting on us to just say, okay, Lord, you take care of it. I like uh, Deaconess Briscoe. She is always like that. Well, we're going to pray. The Lord going to make a way. Sometimes I think she's preaching to me. The Lord is going to do it. And the Lord is going to step in. I was, no wonder Briscoe is so happy. All that Jesus in the home. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she's not the only one. We have others around here like that. You know, that's encouraging. We all need encouragement sometimes. Is that right? All need encouragement sometimes. Praise the Lord. Uh, today might be your day that you need encouragement, and tomorrow might be your day to encourage somebody else. That's why we need one another. Can we say amen? amen. We shouldn't stay home from church, because you never know how God's going to use you when you get to church. Sometimes by you just walking through the door, somebody is encouraged that they can make it. By you just walking in, you ain't saying nothing. I know because it happens to me all the time. And I see you walking in and it encourages me. I'm not just saying that because it sounds good. You know, I'm saying it because it's true. We will never realize the impact we have upon one another. God can use anybody any way that he can. Can we say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Now, if you want to be part of that indestructible church, you need to come on down and say, Pastor, I want to be saved. Being saved is a wonderful life. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. It's a wonderful life. Feeling the presence of God. There ain't nothing better than that. <laughs> the peace of God coming into your life, the joy of salvation, the revelation of his word. God will even tell you some things that are going to happen before they happen to get you ready for it. Y'all ain't hearing me. What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know, but God knows about it. He's going to take care of me. I remember my mother, when my father was abusing her, abusing my two sisters, I remember one service uh, was on a Sunday evening service. We had Sunday evening service. And she got up and sang that song. I think I was seven years old. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care. That did something to me because I knew what was going on in the house. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will. See, that was doing something to me. That's why you got to bring your kids to church. Give me say amen. You got to bring them grandkids to church. I don't care if they don't want to come. Bring them anyway. You never know what God's doing inside of them. God was doing something in me that I didn't even know myself. I was just six years old. You never know what God is doing with your children. You think God just is concerned about the big children? He's concerned about the little children too. You never know what God can do. I can't tell you how many, little, how many kids in the church try to imitate me preaching. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So God is concerned about our children. Can we say amen? Don't be at home, I mean at church and your kids are at home. Because while you are here, the devil is doing something to them there. Get those grandchildren, those great-grandchildren, those nieces and nephews, stepchildren. Bring them so God can do something with them. Because if my mother never took me to church when I was a little boy, and I didn't want to go. Most kids don't want to go to church. Something got a hold of me after a while. She kept bringing me. And then eventually, every time I went to church, I wanted to wear a suit. Six years old, I want to wear a suit to prayer meeting, <laughs> Bible class. Bishop Eggleton was gifted on the, gifted on the piano. It's a concert pianist. He played it beautiful. Folk just, just, just come, just hear him play piano. And I used to sit on the edge of the pew like this, like I was playing the piano with my pastor. Now, 
That prophecy never happened. <laughs> but those old mothers used to see me walking around with a suit on, said, one day you're going to be a preacher. Mother Hampton, Mother Briggs, Mother Jackson, and one of them lived to see it. They're all going on, but they're part of that indestructible church. And when I get there, I'm going to see them. Are you going to see your loved ones there? You got to get there. Can we say amen? My son Daniel, our son Daniel that died at 18 years old. We're going to see him one day. Amen. And then all of that, there's Jesus. Can we say amen? And don't think that he's some white man up there. Oh, no, it ain't that. Jesus is God. The eternal spirit with a glorified body. We ain't serving no man upstairs. We serving the God that's upstairs. <laughs> Don't get it twisted, can we say amen? <laughs> Don't get it twisted. We're serving a mighty God. And you need to come and let him put you in that indestructible church. Come on down here today. What better day to get saved than the Sunday before Easter? Can we say amen? He's calling you, brother. You know you need to come. You know you need to give God your life. You know you need to be saved. You know he's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. Come on. Come on. Give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Come on, he's calling you. Just like a tree planted by the Come on, come on. Come on and be saved. Oh, I want to see him. Hey, oh, I want to see him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come to Jesus today. He's real. He's real. Jesus is real. He cares our past. Come on, brother. Come on, sister. Whoa, as I do see him look up. Come on, come on, come on. Jesus Christ is calling you. Jesus Christ is calling you. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past. Home at last. As I journey, as I journey through this land, pointy souls, souls the Calvary through the crimson flow. Hey, arrows pierce my soul. What, my Lord? Hey, 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 oh, I want to see. Come on today. Jesus is here for you. Jesus is here for you, brother. Here for you, sister. Yes. Hey, let me. Cares all pass. Come on. Come on, he's calling you. He's calling you. Yes, sir. God is calling you today. He's here for you. He's here for you. Come on, he's here for you. Hey, look up on his face. Whoa, there. Of his saving grace. Oh, on the streets of glory. Hey, come on, sister. Come on. God is, come on, come on, come on, come on. God is calling you. Today is your day. Today is your day. Today is your day. In this celebration service. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I want to see. Yes. 
cares all pass. One more time. Yeah, oh, I want to see. There to see forever. Come on, sister. Come to Jesus. God is here today. Today is your day. Today is your day. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Jesus is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The name is here. Hey, cares all past. Yes, glory, glory, glory. Come on. There's still time for you. There's still time for you to come. God is calling you. Calling you, calling you. Yes, he's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. Yes. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Oh, God is a good God. A good God. Yes, he is. Oh, God is a good God. Yes, he is. Hey, God is a mighty God. Yes, yes he is. Oh, God is a mighty God. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Help me say it. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, God is a good God. Yes, Oh, God is a good God. Help me say it. God is a good God. Yes, Oh, Jesus is a good God. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Tell somebody. Oh, yes, he is. Tell somebody. Oh, yes, he is. Been good to me. Woke me up this morning. Hey, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. I was sick. Well, he touched my body. Now I can tell. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Glory, 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 glory. Isn't he good? Oh, somebody ought to praise him. He is a good God. Yes, glory. Yes, sir. Good God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Yes. When my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord, oh, I'll be satisfied. Hey, when my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord, oh, I'll be satisfied. Whoa, I'll be satisfied. Whoa, I'll be satisfied. Hey, 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 hey. When my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord, whoa, I'll be satisfied. Yeah, when my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord, whoa, I'll be satisfied. Yeah, when my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord, oh, I'll be satisfied. Oh, I'll be satisfied. Yeah, I'll be satisfied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord, oh. Yeah, yeah, when my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord, oh, I'll be satisfied. 
my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord. Oh, I My soul is resting in the presence of the Lord. Oh, I'll be satisfied. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When my soul is resting in the when my soul is resting. soul is resting when I go to sleep when my soul is resting oh y'all can't get with it when my soul when my soul is resting when my soul is resting my soul is resting in the son of the Lord oh I be sad I can sing all day. <laughs> all right. Y'all got y'all hungry look on you. Some of y'all got a hangry look on you. Well, we're going to help you with that. Give me say amen. Amen. As our culinary staff, we want to thank God for them and our dining room staff and all the brothers that helped out. Praise God as we bring this service to a close and celebrating our beloved Bishop Eugene Stewart. Praise God. We thank God for him loving Greater Bethel Temple. Can we say amen? amen? This is the church in this city. Not speaking bad about any other ones. We don't have no problem. Anybody else being second. Can we say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. And I just want to say, go blue. Hallelujah. Find a four, baby. Find a four. I just had to get that out. Sister Gabrielle texted me and said, we are in trouble tomorrow. Praise the Lord. All right. Are there any announcements? Any announcements? No announcements? Again, this Friday, we will have communion. It won't be any foot washing. It will be just communion this Friday. And uh, pray for us. We're trying to get our boiler fixed. We don't have no heat uh, in this building. Um, but the Lord's going to work it out. Can we say amen? amen. We'll work it out uh, and uh, we'll go forward in the Lord. So 